Um, hello, all. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to talk about our research regarding space debris. Uh, first of all, I'm Hamla Bas, first year master student at Skoltek. And I'm working on this project together with Ahmed Gohari, who's also first year master student here. And with the help of Anton and Shamil, they are our PhD students under the supervision of Dr. Dimitri Bretkin. Uh, well, um, mainly we are trying to conduct a feasibility study for a space based optical observation to monitor space debris using formation of CubeSats uh, over a range of low Earth orbit. And before talking about the research, uh, let me briefly talk about the problem itself, the space debris. Um, well, you can see that the whole issue started with the down of space era in 1950s. Uh, the good side is that since then we launched thousands of rockets and even more satellites. Those were very, very useful in wide range of applications. The bad side, on the other hand, is that we launched thousands of rockets and even more satellites. Uh, we have been creating a bit of a mess actually. Uh, currently, thousands of dead satellites along with bits of debris from all the rockets we have launched over the, the years are orbiting our planet right now. And this is the issue that we are trying to deal with. So, uh, fortunately, at the moment, space debris doesn't pose a huge risk to our exploration efforts for space, but the biggest danger it poses is to our other satellites, the other satellites in orbit. For example, in uh, 2009, two communication satellites, the Active Commercial Iridium Satellite and the Russian Military Cosmos Satellite, uh, they accidentally collided at a speed of around 12,000 meters per second and an altitude of around 800 kilometers above Siberia. And this resulted in at least 1,000 pieces of debris larger than 10 centimeters, in addition to many, many smaller ones. Uh, also, the problem is that across all satellites, hundreds of collision avoidance maneuvers are performed every year, including by the International Space Station itself, the ISS. And according to NASA, the ISS has to do from one to two maneuvers per year to avoid getting damaged by space debris, and these maneuvers cost much money. Uh, another unfortunate thing about space debris is, according to Kessler syndrome, he's a NASA scientist, that if there was too much space junk in orbit, it could result in a chain reaction where more and more objects collide and create new space junk in the process. To the point that the, the Earth's orbit become unusable and by this time, the space exploration actually will be ended uh, like the, the image shown. Okay, uh, to get a better hint over the, the numbers of space junk, uh, you can see that there is around 2,000 active satellites right now in, in Earth's orbit and around 3,000 dead satellites, more than the, the active ones. And there is around 34,000 pieces of space junk larger than 10 centimeters, but the very, very huge number is the around 130 million pieces of space junk larger than one millimeter, the smaller ones. And those are the ones that we will be focusing on on our research. So, again, what are we exactly trying to do? The goal of our mission is to characterize the space debris population in the chosen region of interest and to provide statistical information of these very small debris objects. And by small, I mean not large enough to be cataloged and tracked via the ground-based monitoring systems, and also to perform on-demand orbit determination for specific debris objects. And at first, to decide upon the, the exact area of interest, uh, we have we have investigated the spatial density of debris at different attitudes. This data shown from Master, uh, Master is ESA's debris and Detroit risk assessment tool. Uh, the data shows the spatial density of debris of diameter from one micrometer to 100 meter for all the attitudes from around 200 uh, kilometers to around 37,000 kilometers. Uh, both the, the, the man-made debris and the resulted from collisions, explosions, ETC, and the natural droids uh, are, are shown in the data. And you can see that most of the debris is located in the LEO region, low Earth orbit regions, uh, at smaller altitudes from around 100 to 2,000 kilometers. So uh, we chose the LEO region because it has the highest debris uh, density, the good variation over it, and also it has very, very variable uh, space objects like the International Space Station, the ISS, and some very important crowded sun synchronous orbits. So uh, having a closer look at our region, chosen region, 
for an attitude less than 1,000 kilometers, we can see that most of the fragments are resulted from uh, explosions and collisions. I mean, this is the one that we will be focusing on. So, till now, uh, the research is still in its very early steps. Uh, we have just submitted the abstract for the IAC conference, so hopefully it will be finished by September. But uh, our plan for what's coming is as following. Uh, first of all, after that, we will be the, to, to investigate the commercially available optical sensors able to detect small debris and focusing on the fragments from explosions and collisions. And once we have that, the actual work begins. Uh, we will start formulating the observation algorithm itself constructed by spacecraft clusters to determine the number of these clusters in the intersupply distances uh, within cluster and the number of spacecraft and their characteristics. To say it in different words, to use dual, turbulent, or multi-point of view observations. Um, also, uh, an important part of the study is to optimize the orbital configuration of the mission for, for time, uh, which means to analyze the number of clusters needed to collect enough samples depending on the time requirements given. And another very important outcome is the multi-point measurements processing algorithm, uh, which determines the space, uh, space debris objects orbit from the observation performed by the spacecraft in the, the same cluster. And at this step, I hope that we will be able to answer some, some questions like the, the lifespan of the mission, uh, the duration of the single observation, and how many objects are observed at a time. And I think that's, uh, that's most of the research about. So finally, as a conclusion, uh, our study aims to lay the groundwork for CubeSat-based space segment architectures, uh, enabling the, the identification and tracking of smaller space debris objects. Uh, also to verify the statistical models used to uphold space uh, situational awareness like the ones used in master. And finally, to build the way uh, for a technical demonstration mission uh, to be designed by Scott University. Um, that's it, I think.